Here is a lens you'll probably never buy, and I'll explain why. Now today we are talking about this lens, the Sony 28 to 135 power zoom lens. It's a really unique lens and actually until now it was kind of a strange lens that didn't really make much sense. It came with uh, the FS7, that's how actually we got our one. And of course the FS7 was a crop sensor camera, a super 35mm camera. But this, this is clearly a lens designed for full frame. After all, 28 is nowhere near wide enough for a super 35 sensor. So now, now we have plenty of full frame Sony cameras such as the FX3, the FX6, FX9 and of course the A7S3. Is this a lens that you should consider? Now this is quite a unique lens. Until recently, there was only two lenses that actually had the power zoom feature in the Sony lineup. Of course, there was this lens and then the uh, wide angle version that they released with the FS7 Mark II, which made far more sense for crop sensor cameras. I don't understand why they didn't release that version first, but it was a weird mistake that they made back then. Now the overall specs of this lens aren't necessarily that impressive. After all, there are plenty of other f4 lenses out there. The zoom range is pretty good although it's not as wide angle as you'd hope it to be. 28 certainly isn't wide enough for a lot of use cases. The stabilization is very good though and that is something that's very impressive and actually for its use case could be very very useful. As you can see it is a big and heavy lens. You know this isn't something that you can easily carry around. Now because of its size it certainly looks very impressive. I mean pretty much out of any mirrorless camera lens you can buy this probably looks one of the best. It's got that nice big hood like you'd see on broadcast cameras. So you don't need to have a matte box on there. Uh, it's got really nice kind of long focus throws uh, and uh, same with the zoom and an aperture ring as well. You even got a power zoom switch on the side where you can switch between manual and servo. And of course you can actually zoom in and out with the power zoom using the little dial on the side as well. You can even de-click the aperture and of course turn on and off your optical steady shot. The zoom range is pretty large, but as I mentioned at the wide angle, it is a bit lacking. But at 135, that's pretty good zoom and better than a lot of the competition. That said, we do now have lenses like the Tamron 35 to 135 as well, which you know offer much faster apertures, uh, making it much more appropriate for doing interviews, for example. Um, yes, you do lose a little bit of the wide angle with that, but you're already not really wide enough with this lens either. Of course, the main reason why you'd buy this lens is for the power zoom feature. And of course, if you've got an FX3 or an FX6, you can use it with uh, one of the dials on the camera. So why would you want power zoom on a lens? Well, mostly it's for things like sport, where you need to carry on filming and you need to be showing the shot as you zoom in and out. Not something where uh, you can crash zoom in and you can cut out that bit of the footage, but somewhere like filming a football match, for example, or soccer in America where you need to follow the ball, you need to follow the action, and it may be the only camera that you're filming with, and that's where this lens becomes very, very useful. Now, despite its zoom range, whether 135 millimeters is enough though, is a bit of a question mark. I have found when I've shot sport with this lens in the past that sometimes it's just a bit too short. Certainly if you're filming in a larger stadium then I think you'd really struggle to zoom in on the action with this lens without using um, sort of the digital zoom options and the clear image zoom that the Sony cameras actually have built in. Now the zoom is very very smooth and it looks great however it is pretty slow even its max speed you're not going to be able to crash zoom or uh, change your or focal length very very quickly. The zoom motor is completely electronic. You can't manually crash zoom this lens uh, like you would with a traditional broadcast lens for example and that is one of the limitations. The other limitation with that as well is actually there's a bit of delay when you go to zoom in and out. It's very slight, it's very small 
but it is there. And that can also be quite frustrating uh, when you're comparing this to proper broadcast lenses. Despite its age, autofocus on this lens is actually quite impressive, certainly just as good as the newer lenses that Sony have been bringing out. As you can see here, it locks onto my eye with no problem on the FX3. And I certainly wouldn't be concerned about autofocus on this lens at all. The image quality on this lens is okay, it does the job. Also, considering the size of this lens, f4 does feel a bit slow. Yes, you're getting some really unique features, but you are carrying around a very, very heavy lens. And to be honest, there are much smaller, sharper, better options out there now. Its final issues is its filter diameter. It's 95 millimeters on the front here, which is very, very large. It's you know expensive to buy filters uh, that are that large. And that's normally fine if you're shooting something like the FS7 or FX6, of course they had built-in ND filters. But if you're using this with an FX3 or any other cameras that don't have built-in ND, then it's gonna get expensive to put an ND filter on the front of this lens. So who is this lens still for? Well, it's really for people doing maybe news and sport. If you don't do that sort of work, if you're doing corporate work, although you may be tempted by this kind of all-in-one package, it really isn't for you. There are better lenses, even other f4 lenses, which are smaller and sharper than this. It may look impressive, it may impress your clients, but at the end of the day, I would just say, go and get one of the other lenses, which are far better than it. However, if you're doing news and sports, for example, where you need the power zoom, then perhaps this is the only option out there for full frame cameras that makes any sense. A lot of people I know who have come from the broadcast world, they love lenses like this. This is much more at home with what they're used to. They will find it frustrating though with the, uh, the way the zoom works because it is very slow compared to traditional broadcast lenses. The build quality is excellent, but still not quite up to what maybe you expect from lenses that you've used in the past for your smaller sensor cameras. A while ago, we did actually do a documentary with the FS7 and this lens, and it was the only lens we used for the entire shoot. It was in Santorini, very dusty environment, and it was great just to have one lens through the whole shoot uh, that produced excellent throughout the whole time we were there. That said, if I was doing it again, I would definitely be taking a lens which was far smaller than this one. Even for those that do need it for sport, be aware of that zoom range limitation. If you're doing news, be aware that it isn't the widest lens in the world out there. And perhaps even though stills lenses might not seem like the better way to go, I would probably suggest looking into them instead. So there you go, the Sony 28 to 135 power zoom image stabilized lens. A very unique lens from Sony, but unfortunately one that probably doesn't make sense to most people in 2022. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.